so we're on a trail here that is actually a hiking trail I'm not going to tell you where it is because I probably shouldn't be on it but we're going to talk about the gearing for your Grom right now I'm in first gear my gear ratio is a 14.37 I have a man in the box intake, FMF exhaust TV parts cam and an ECU reflash to suit them you want to make sure that you got your gearing set up the way you should if you don't have your gearing right you're just not going to have the torque to pull yourself out of anything and that's with my mods if I had a if I had the mods that I have with the stock gearing, I honestly don't even know if I would be able to pull myself out of some stuff that I've been through. So you're definitely going to want to go with some gearing. I recommend 14 tooth 37, but if I were to be doing this stuff exclusively, I would go with the 14 38. So the other items, like I said before, following up, item one was knobby tires. Item two is the gears. Item three is gonna be some handlebars. I chose the Pro Taper KLX 110 bent. These give you some great control. They're at a good height for both street and dirt stuff. If you want to go a little bit higher, you can go to the uh, Honda XR50 bar. Then you got to stretch your cables out a little bit. It's not really a big deal. But definitely get yourself some handlebars that will help you control the bike better. Stock Grom handlebars, they're a little bit close together. They're a little bit high. It makes kind of for a funky feel for the steering, in my opinion. The steering is almost like a little bit too quick. Movements are... are um, multiplied by how quick how close the steering is the, how close your hands are together so if your hands are like this i mean you're just gonna like it's gonna swing the the wheel around faster if they're wider apart you can control your front wheels turning motion a lot finer so definitely go with some upgraded bars and i mentioned some engine mods that i've had now if you want your ground clearance, you're probably going to want to go with the exhaust that does not have the underpipe to it or the catalytic converter, the big loop underneath the, uh, the motor, because that thing is going to hit some rocks. My 2019 Honda Monkey has a stock pipe on it right now for this trip, and uh, that thing has taken a good bite out of some rocks so far. And um, it's uh, not that tall, although it hasn't really hindered my progress too much. Look at this tree bridge. It's pretty cool. Huh. At least these trails are maintained somewhat. So my chosen engine mods to make my Grom an all-around beast mode Grom, whether it be trails, mini moto tracks, uh, the occasional off-road race that I get involved with, like the Barber Small Bore or the uh, uh, Woodsman Cup. How could I forget that? You know, this, the mods that I have are about perfect, in my opinion, for that. So the basis of those mods is the TB Parts camshaft. This is a really affordable camshaft, $69, I think simple mod simple it's easy to put in you don't really need that many technical skills for it and it does a lot for the power range of your bike so the more you open your valves the more air you let in and out of your engine so that increases power so to support that air coming in and out upgrade the exhaust first in my opinion because when you upgrade the exhaust getting a freer flow 
you're removing a lot of restriction. And then after your exhaust, definitely check out an intake. I have the uh, man in the box M take on this. And uh, not only does it make this bike sound pretty good, it really gives it a freer flow. Gets rid of some mass in between the bike. Mud City. Oh yeah. Sorry, it's kind of hard to motor vlog when I'm navigating through grass and mud. Mud underneath the grass. You can see just how slippery that stuff is going up, and that's with the Shinko Mobber tires. We're gonna do some water there. So those three mods together will do you wonders, but you have to have your ECU reflashed to experience the full potential of those mods working together. So for the ECU reflash, I recommend DHM. DHM reflashed the ECU for this Grom and took into account the cam, the intake, and the exhausts I have. And put a pretty good tune on it. This this bike runs fantastic and it's got power where I need it. I'm chugging along in first gear right now barely moving and when I need to pull out of it you know it doesn't have instant power but it'll pick up and go. Oh I just slammed my exhaust there and I have the FMF race pipe on here so even, even some rocks will come up and bite you. So once you get all your mods together, get your ECU reflashed for them, go out and start slamming some trails. The other thing that I have on this bike that are helpful, but not as helpful as I'd like them to be, are the Two Brothers Racing foot pegs. These are like the off-road motocross style foot pegs. And uh, they're good they provide more more grip but they're really not that wide I really wish they were like an inch wider because my boot like I mean it doesn't cover my whole boot surface or my boot underneath it it's only kind of hitting half of it and that's kind of aggravating because I'm always trying to squeeze my boots towards the middle hey I think we got a creek crossing here this might be interesting Wonder how deep that is. Guess we should find out, right? Oh yeah, shifters are good to have too when you're going off-roading. Because that little bendy back thing right there is really helpful when you hit a rock or a tree or, you know, a tree, but a log sticking up. Because if you're on your stock shifter and you have that solid little peg there, that thing is going to bend. Taking a nice little descent here. Back down to that creek crossing. Do a little wash off on the grom again. Okay, so I think you missed my second creek crossing because I ran out of battery just as I was going through it, which is the most unfortunate thing ever because it was really cool. At least you got the one though. So now we're heading back, going backtracking because I heard a little bit of thunder and I am not in my uh, rain worthy gear to say the least. I always ride in shorts and uh, this is like a Florida thing. I know it's stupid, shouldn't ride motorcycles in shorts, but it's my style. You might be wondering why I'm not blasting through those mud puddles and 
that is 100% because I don't have the stock fender mud flap on here which does wonders for blocking mud from flying up onto your back so when you go with a uh, what people like to call a tail tidy or what I have is the man in the box fender delete tail light kit you are going to get mud on your back so it's another good thing to mention for those that want to strictly off-road is that you're gonna get a muddy back and a muddy rear end because that tire is gonna flick mud straight up sorry got a little distracted there tires gonna flick mud right up under your back as ugly as the stock fender is it actually does a really good job actually love mud and puddles on the trail because if you have to backtrack like I just did you know you've been through here before so you can see your tire tracks in the puddle It's a good place to stop our video, All right? Stop. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you guys now understand a little bit better the capabilities of your Honda Grom, what you can do with it, what might be a little bit too, too much, but there's not much that it can't do. I will tell you, I'm not good at wheelies. So, go out there, go get your Grom dirty. It can do it. And the only limiting factor typically is the tires, the gearing, and in certain instances, your ground clearance. So, keep those things in mind. Get you some Pro Taper Kalex 110 bars. Watch out for groundhogs. Have a good time. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you like this content. See you next time.